Welcome to College Football Roundtable, your source for college football coverage, including major storylines, playoffs, can't miss game previews, and picks each week. Join your hosts, Dan, Rob, and Jordan at the roundtable for a show unlike anything else. As for Football presents the College Football Roundtable. All right, guys, check it out. Army didn't play this week. Air Force didn't play this week. Yes, it was one of the most entertaining weeks of college football that we have had all season. What's up, Trash Talkers? Welcome back to the College Football Roundtable, or if you prefer, Rating Knocker Radio. I'm your host, Rob, the Angry Colonel. I am currently rocking my Quit Being a Triggered Pansy shirt, which is VTT quality <laughs> material. So make sure that you guys uh, check them out and get one. Uh, again, they have a store that's open, and Nick and the team would always take your money, but it's always for a good cause. So just remember that. I'm joined today by Dano Ikebesa in coastal Connecticut, and James in the Oki State of Oklahoma. I'm going to run right straight into the Service Academy results from last week. As noted earlier, Army and Navy didn't play, so they both had the week off. And Navy, holy moly. And I think James can talk a little bit about this because he uh, kind of poked his nose in and watched some of that action. So please, if you don't mind, James, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I got to go to uh, Tulsa uh, a few hours down the road. Very cool city. I'm definitely going back. Uh, I kind of understand why a school with, you know, a smaller enrollment than the service academies is FBS. Uh, but uh, it was a good game. Uh, you know, started off, it was uh, Tulsa all the way. Navy had a couple boneheaded plays. But by the end of it, uh, the mids rushed for over 300 yards and five yards per carry, uh, which was enough for the win. They ended up going up 20 to 10, and Tulsa scored late uh, and a failed onside kick, made it 2017. So uh, Navy ended up get, coming away and doubling their win total, went up to two. They let Tulsa <laughs> put up, uh, yeah, 129 yards on 30 carries. Um, Tulsa seemed pretty good, although, uh, you know, Navy's, uh, uh, defense held when it needed to, and uh, not that they were fantastic all game, uh, and just four and 11 on third down, which is, uh, you know, th- that point that, uh, Navy's defense made big plays when they had to, uh, Tulsa had eight penalties for 70 yards. I will also say that in that game, the refs were clearly on Tulsa's side. So Navy fans uh, actually had some reason to be happy this week. We'll, we'll move I, on to I, service I, Academy coverage. So Coast Guard Academy lost to MIT. So those nerds were fighting and uh, over who's going to win. And obviously the Coast Guard Academy is not doing well. I don't think they've won a game this season, which is pretty abysmal. Like that's always the, the dreaded feeling of having to go out to the field, knowing that uh, the odds are stacked against you at winning. Uh, Merchant Marine finally lost the game. Uh, they lost to Springfield 28-23. The Mariners put up 401 yards of total offense, but couldn't uh, finish consistently enough. They were 50% on fourth down attempts, and that ultimately cost them the game. And again, you know, they were 7-0 heading into uh, the road contest at Springfield. Uh, again, home field advantage came to rear its ugly head. Merchant Marine has a bye this week, and Unless they fall asleep at the wheel or half the team gets DUI, I fully expect them to win the Commander's Cup on November the 13th. Uh, James, we'll kick it back over to you because uh, Dan did have a question about the Navy defense. How do they look uh, while you're at the game? What are your thoughts? Uh, They are – can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, go. Okay, cool. Uh, They are uh, much better than they started last year. I would say not quite as good as they ended last year. Okay. Um, I mean, th- their defense revolves around Diego Fago. They're really hurting, missing their uh, starting safety. I forget his first name, last name Brennan. He's a team captain, and I don't know if he's out for the rest of the season, but he was in a sling yesterday or, uh, on Friday. Um, so they could be a lot better if they had him. Um, but uh, Diego Fago is is their defense and has made a lot of big plays. So um, um, that's their key player. All right. So the bottom line, both Army and Air Force look good. Uh, against teams that they're fairly evenly matched against each other. Uh, depending on who starts, a quarterback army might have the advantage in the passing game, though Air Force seems to be better at rushing defense so far this season. But again, both of those teams are ranked pretty high on the defensive side of the ball. So it should be a push when it comes to defense. I think it's going to be a special teams or an offensive miscue or something that gets pulled out of the playbook that we will not see that will shock all of us. That will be the difference in the game. Regardless, the Commander's Classic is in Texas on November the 6th, and we'll decide the fate of the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. 
and that is the next game for both Army and Air Force. Uh, talking about this, I'll, I'll pass it over to Dan because Dan is going to the game, and I'm kind of jealous because he gets to go down to Dallas. Yo, man, I'm excited. Like I, uh, you know, we, we talked about at much more length on the other show, but yeah, going to see a bunch of my classmates. Uh, hopefully, see Army uh, at least retain the Commander in Chief's trophy. I obviously can't win it outright and until the uh, Army Navy game. But yeah, man, let's keep that thing away from those stinky zoomies. We don't we don't need to give that back. We leave that in the mess hall. Yeah, for sure. All right, James, if you don't mind, uh, we'll dive into the AP poll uh, top 10 standings this week. You got it. Uh, 47 ranked teams uh, have lost going into week 10 uh, and then nine this week. So we have a total of 56 on the year. Uh, 2007 is going to be a forgotten memory if we keep this rate going. Uh, Teams ranked 6th, 9th, 10th, 12th, 17th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd all lost. Uh, We had number five, Ohio State beat number 20, Penn State. Number eight, Michigan State beat number six, Michigan, in the craziest game of the season in a lot of ways, including some uh, uh, continuous poor officiating by the Big Ten crew. Unranked Wisconsin absolutely (laughs) dismantled number nine, Iowa, by a 20-point victory. Number 18, Auburn uh, goes and uh, hands Lane Kiffin his second loss of the year, 31-20. to Unranked Mississippi State beats number 12, Kentucky. Uh, Miami beats uh, number 17, Pitt, who had previously only lost to Western Michigan. Unranked Houston beats SMU, hurting Cincinnati's playoff chances. Unranked unranked Fresno State beats uh, ranked San Diego State, and there are no more undefeated teams in the Mountain West. And West Virginia beats number 22, Iowa State, by seven. Yeah, we have said this multiple times. There's a lot of parity in the Power Five just outside of the top 10, all the way up to the top 50, and there are a handful of really good teams that are looking for a few big breaks to make their season. I'm wearing my Quit Being a Trigger Pansy shirt for several reasons. One, because it's cross-promoting the Veteran Trash Talk Hour, but this is also for both James and Joe, who are big Oh, man, Rob, you broke up and it's probably just as well because uh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the Internet was quite ready for that rant. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Either way, uh, your new top 10 in college football are standing. Georgia, 8-0, no, number one, Cincinnati. Oh. All right, I'm going to drop my video for a second, see if this thing catch up. All right, so we got Georgia, 8-0 no, uh, at number one, Cincinnati, 8-0 no, at Number two, Alabama seven and one, Oklahoma nine and zero, oh, Michigan State eight and zero, oh, Ohio State seven and one, Oregon seven and one, Notre Dame seven and one, Michigan seven and one, and Wake Forest getting no love because it has five one loss teams ranked in front of them is at number ten. I, I'm a little concerned about that because uh, again they're in the their Power Five team and they're not getting in. The, they're just desserts for beating people handily with their pretty impressive offense and I don't want to hear about the slow mesh during the playoff. So hopefully they won't get picked, <laughs> but uh, the reality of it is, is they're a solid team. Uh, notable also entries are 16, <laughs> number 16, eight, no UTSA. Who would have thought that seven two BYU is number 17, seven and one Houston is number 20 and the Chanticleers are number 21 at seven and one SMU is number 23, Louisiana and Fresno State, all with seven wins, are standing 23, 24, and 25. Others receiving votes. San Diego State had 50. App State comes out of nowhere. And then Nevada with two. But the question for the crew, and we just talked about this, does Wake Forest have a a path to the playoff? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. I wish that they did. Like, I'm I'm totally team Wake Forest right now. Uh, not just because they played Army and I want Army to look good. But it's frustrating to me that you've got a Power 5 team in the ACC just motorboating everyone, and they can't get any love at all. Like, I actually think that's concerning. You know, at this point, it's the preseason The preseason rankings have more to do with their current ranking than their performance on the field. And that's, that's really, really aggravating. You know, people just can't get off of Alabama and Ohio State because they're perennially good teams. And they are good teams. But, you know, you got to win the games like you you have to win the games. So uh, we'll see what the college football playoff does when they actually rank these teams for the first time tomorrow. But 
yeah, I don't know, man. I'm, uh, <laughs> it's not looking good for, for Wake, even though I, I think they probably do deserve a shot if they can run the table. James, what about you? Yeah, I uh, I think they do. Um, I think that you're going to see the playoff have them ranked higher than the AP, and I think that's because the playoff has different motives. Um, you also got to remember that they haven't beaten a ranked team yet this year, and potentially their three hardest games of the season are three of the next four between Clemson, NC State, and I think uh, Pitt. Or I'm not. I'm not They're sure playing uh, they Chapel Hill. They're playing oh, the Tar Heels Chapel this Hill. week. Yeah, yeah. So Trap Hill, NC State, and Clemson are, are potentially three, their three hardest games of the year, and they have them yet to go. If they're going to make the playoff, they need to win two of those three games and beat BC, go and win the ACC championship, and I think a one-loss Wake Forest is going to go over Cincinnati. Um, oh, no and, way. And There's no way. 100%, Dan. Dan, Dan, you're telling me the playoff is going to give the American Athletic Conference $6 million when they could have given it to the ACC. With the same rules they've used for the last seven years. Oh, that's a compelling argument. Um, I, I just, I don't know, man. We're, I'm not, we're... I'm not saying that Cincinnati wouldn't run the table with Wake Forest. Like uh, that might be. Well, the first case. off, I think Wake Forest would beat Cincinnati, but that's another, that's a completely separate discussion. Right. I, I think that Wake Forest is a clear path as a one-loss ACC. All right, let's let's move on. You're breaking up, James. Let's move on. All right, so I, I'm going to pile in real quick. The other thing that's kind of frustrating is Mackenzie Milton, right? That dude is slinging it, and there's no Heisman Trophy talk for that guy at all whatsoever. You know, so I think it's just – I think it's – honestly, I think the entire uh, college football community is just straight up throwing shade on Wake Forest, and I guess that's what we're going to have to deal with until uh, something shakes loose. If they beat Clemson by two touchdowns, you might see a difference of opinion, but that's what they need to do, I think. We'll see. All right, so moving on to the next thing. Uh, well, we've already covered the the top ten, and all right, let's see the Commanders Classic again. We talked about that already. Uh, Zoomies are favored by three. I don't know if, if I like that, especially because I think it's going to be home field advantage for Army. And and, and Dan, I think uh, we talked about that on the other show. But what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I I mean, it just I put this note in here because first off, it opened Air Force minus one. Now it's now uh, Army's getting three points, but uh, ESPN actually has Army with like a 55 or 60 percent chance of winning the game. So it's just all over the place. I mean, it, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't get too excited if it's plus or minus three. Like that's essentially a push. Yeah, for sure. So uh, moving on to the the top ranked matchups of this week, uh, roundtable game of the week, of course, is going to be Army Air Force because that's why we're here. Uh, Georgia State is playing number 24 Louisiana on Thursday night. You got number 10 Wake at UNC Chapel Hill. Liberty is playing at Old Miss. That should be an interesting game. We'll see if uh, Liberty is actually the real deal when they go against the Lane Kiffin offense. Number 23, SMU at Memphis. Michigan State at Purdue. This is a trap game if there ever was one. You know, got a mm. tough opponent coming down the road. Just had a tough win at home against a quality opponent. Uh, trap game all over at uh, Oklahoma State versus West Virginia. This is quickly turning into a trap game as well because West Virginia has been sneakily getting better over the season. Uh, Auburn and Texas A&M, that's a push. LSU and Alabama, old coach O needs to win another one just for the sake of uh, saving his own skin and maybe he can land somewhere else once he gets away from uh, the boosters in Tigerland. And uh, the group five game of the week is going to be UTSA at an upstart UTEP. What sucks is that that game is on at like 10, 15 at night Eastern, and that's going to be an electric game. I don't know if anybody's following, but UTSA is undefeated. UTEP has turned their whole season around. They've, they got two losses, but they're good. Like that's an electric game. I wish that was on at a better time. Yeah, for sure. And, and James, it's uh, time for the pick and traps week review, if you don't mind. Yeah, you got it. So uh, last week, Dan went one and one. Uh, he finally broke his split streak, but then uh, went back into it this week. He correctly picked Purdue plus seven, uh, but then missed with Duke Wake Forest over 69. Uh, Wake Forest had the offensive performance, uh, but Duke did not. Uh, Jordan hit with Navy plus 11. They won outright. 
Uh, Rob hit with uh, Min uh, at Michigan State, uh, over 59. Current rankings, we got Dan plus four. Rob and Jordan are three behind at plus one. Weekly Locks. Dan, who do you have this week? Yeah, just one pick from me. I've got Wake Forest plus two and a half at North Carolina. I'm probably going to kill myself for this one later. But amazingly, I was looking at this. I couldn't believe it. The Tar Heels are actually giving up more yards per play than Wake Forest with that defense. Like, I'm telling you, people are sleeping on Wake. Um, you know, they get into a shootout with Army at Mikey Stadium, and everybody's like, oh, they're terrible. No, they're not. They're a good team. And my trap game, uh, we already talked about this, Michigan State minus three at Purdue. Got an emotional win last week, and they're two weeks away from the big showdown with Ohio State. Man, Sparty's got to stay focused and finish strong. Yeah, yeah for sure. Right. So uh, we got we got Wake plus two and a half. Jordan's gone this week. He has the same pick of uh, Rob. Who do you have? All right. So my game of the week is going to be Tennessee versus Kentucky. So far, Kentucky is one of one of two teams in the SEC to score more than ten points against Georgia. Uh, Wandell Robinson is no joke. I think that guy's going to be pretty electric against the the Vols. I mean, Kentucky got upset last week, so they're bouncing back and you know, smacking around a, a team that uh, dropped Army off the schedule. Plus, that was doing pretty well during the season. I, I'm all for. But uh, there's not a lot of talk about Wandale Robinson, I think, just because he's in a smaller school within the SEC. But that guy's talented. If he was playing in any other uh, conference, he would be conference player of the week just about every week because they get him 20, 25 touches if they can. Uh, solid player. Uh, my track, my trap game this week is uh, the back to the Big Ten again, Ohio State versus Nebraska. I actually think that uh, Ohio State has two trap games back to back on the schedule because they've got the Huskers and then they're going in against Purdue. Purdue's not a bad team. They're five and two, but it's in the Big Ten East. And by comparison to the West, they're not doing that well. But uh, I think uh, this will be a very interesting contest. And again, I think the rest of the season is still going to be crazy. I think we're going to have 60, 65 uh, ranked teams that have lost by the end of this season. I mean, we're already on pace to pass the 59 in uh, 2007. So I think that is probably the most telling statistic of the year, regardless of like all the, the fits and starts and traps and everything else that you're looking at. When you look at just pure numbers, the number of ranked teams that have been bumped off and then like this week, most of the action that happened with ranked teams losing were against other ranked teams. So it was ranked on ranked matchups that were causing fratricide. And then as you get deeper into the SEC and the Big Ten schedule, they're going to be picking each other off. So there's probably not going to be very many uh, undefeated teams, particularly after this first uh after this first round of announcements for the college football playoff, I think we'll see Cincy and Wake probably five and six. And then it'll mm. be some rando craziness that, uh, you know, you're going to see. It, like, if you – you should see Michigan State in there as a Big Ten rep. Like, there's probably – You definitely should at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, here's what's going to happen. You have two Big Ten teams and – two SEC teams, unfortunately, because that's how <laughs> that's how it's going to play out, right? Until somebody loses again, like if Alabama takes another lump, then they might be out of the picture on the outside looking in, you know, and really the only perennial contenders that have ever been on the outside looking in is going to be Clemson, and that's because they did it to themselves because they just haven't won. But right now, I would not be surprised to see one, potentially two lost teams with Cincinnati, like number four or five, you know, biting their lips saying, man, we should join a conference. And I think that's going to force a lot of the conference realignment that's happening. All right, man. So what was your pick uh, up there when you gave us uh, your game of the week? Uh, Tennessee plus point and a half. Are you taking Tennessee or you're taking Kentucky? I'm taking Kentucky. Okay. I'm, so I'm all things anti-volunteers this year. <laughs> well, that's a good way to be. All right, man. You want to close the show? All right, guys, as always, hey, sign up, like, and subscribe. As for football, go to the webpage, look on the, the bottom right-hand corner, subscribe for our email list, follow us everywhere on all different types of platforms for social media. Veteran Trash Talk Hour is great. If you guys have not listened to episode 70, it's got my classmate Daniel Gade, who ran for office and uh, showcased his book, Wounding Warriors. And so he talked about uh, how policy is uh, hurting the veteran community. So if that suits your kind of interest, you may want to check that out. It was a really good uh, episode of the podcast. Uh, Nick and Buddy's Fifth Principle Patrolling and 
I am the angry colonel at As for Football, and this is the College Football Roundtable. The ring knockers are out. Beat Air Force. Beat them. Thanks for listening to the As for Football College Football Roundtable. Join the As for Football team on our next episode as we bring you more hot takes and college football analysis. We would also like to thank our sponsor, UniformFlag.com, where 100% of the proceeds from all purchases go to the Lead the Way Fund. Show your service and support a great cause. You can also find us at AskForFootball.com and across all social media platforms. I would also like to give a quick shout out to our Globe Platform presenters of our video podcast at VeteranTrashTalk.com.